Good morning. I hope it's not too soon for another video already. Um, this is going to be another page that I am doing. It's with the Prismacolors. These are my color swatches. This is how I go through and pick my colors. And I make these and sell them on Etsy without the color on there or the number or names. That way you can use it for whatever brand you have and they're not colored because everybody colors at a different heaviness with their hands. Um, I make them out of a lightweight cardstock and um, instead of sending you the ring, you are sent some straight metal um, closures and it's pictured on my Etsy. I just find that they're easier to snap into books and things so that's why I've started using those instead of these rings. So, all right, if you're going to order and you're following along, I am using Prismacolor. If you don't have Prismacolor and you've ordered my conversion chart, you can look and see if these colors are on that chart. I did not look ahead to see. Um, warm grays, uh, white, some peachy oranges, some browns, and a black. And if you need to pause and write this down, then go ahead and do that. That's my list. This one that's not showing up so good is 939. And this is actually a peach, but I went ahead and wrote it in black because it wasn't showing up at all. So there's that. Now let's go ahead and get started with our barn. Um, I'll put that out of my way. Let's get started right up here in this lightest area. This is a grayscale, so you need only to um, put the lightest colors in the lightest places and follow along from there. Now, my line for the top of this barn almost goes right into the sky, so that's another reason I want to go ahead and get started on this first. It was a very, very overcast day when I shot this photo, and therefore it does, the sky is just almost white, but it's a, it's a very light gray, so I'm not going to take the time to color that in. I do have a video on doing clouds. You could go back in and add the clouds yourself. This is a very old barn. We were in Missouri one time at my dad's old homestead. And um, this is from when he was a kid. So I'm just doing my lightest colors. You'll notice I am not doing my circles this time. That's because I'm going the direction the wood is going. Okay, now up here I did not. But up here, you can't really see grain lines. So, but down here where you can see the colors, I'm taking this and putting it in those lightest, lightest colors. And I'm going to come back and add other shades and um, colors. And that's what's going to really give this barn that old, old look. It is a very old barn. So let's just get the roof put in to start with. And um, very worn wood. Okay, that was 927. I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep these in order. So if you see me pick one up and you've written down your list, you'll know what color it is. But I will try to um, go ahead and tell you the colors as I go. This is 939. This is the next color up on the list. And now I'm just going to do that next color going into, just streaking into that first color. This barn is not um, going to look like your traditional red barn because it is so worn. It is very aged. So for you that like the old aged barns, this is um, going to be the piece for you. I think you'll really enjoy this. And the sky being so light leaves you a place that you can come back in and do lettering over the top. And then 
be able to actually frame this if you'd like. You know, you can do a scripture, you can do your favorite poem, your saying. You know, there's lots of things that you could letter across there. And if you're not comfortable with using your own hand for lettering, I'm going to skip this one. I'm going to go to the next one. So this is nine, no, 1033. So if you're not comfortable with your own lettering, you can actually um, trace from some of my sheets that are for the uh, margin, Bible margins. I've got those over in my Etsy. So you can um, you can actually color the back of those sheets black and then flip it over, lay it on your page and trace over and that black will leave just enough imprint on your paper that you'll be able to use that to put the lettering in. And I believe I have cited a video that I did on that Etsy page showing you how to do that. It's not really hard. Yeah, these um, these places here that I'm doing now, this is like the old metal, the tin sheeting, and it's really rusted. So I think I said earlier wood planks, but this is actually sheets of tin, and it's just really gotten in there and rusted. So, just coloring along here, trying to get that aged look, working in a lot of streaky motion for this part of it. And this is also tin, and most of this is going to be this color. Yeah, I couldn't believe how old this was. I don't have an actual date on it, but um, my dad's in his 70s now, so if that gives you any idea. Yeah, I don't think this barn is standing anymore even. So now I'm going to come back over to, yeah, let's go to this lighter one. It's 927. Let's go ahead and get this in. Very simple, just get it in there. And then to help blend these a little, I'm going to come to 1092 and get some more in here. Okay, again, it's very, very rusty and old looking. And so the more you'll layer those colors, the more age you're going to get to this piece. And just the layers, layer upon layer. If you're buying my Etsy sheets, thank you for your support. I don't charge for my videos. I think sometimes people buy them just to support me doing the videos. I'm I'm not sure if they're actually doing the sheets or not. I never see them over posted on the coloring book group, but hopefully they are. I am going to put a little bit of light up here, the lighter color. Well, actually it's a darker color than what I did before because I don't want that just to blend in with the sky. Okay, and notice how I kept it going this way instead of this way, because these sheets of metal are laid at this angle, okay? And these are laying at this angle. And then the ones down here are laying here again. So be sure you do directional coloring to where it shows. Um, let's skip that brown, let's see. I know, there it is, black raspberry. Let's go to 1095 and we're going to put in just some really dark areas that are going to do a little more defining now. You see how that changed that just a little? 
So just by getting some darker darks in there, we're really going to age this some more. And the entire front of this barn is pretty dark. But again, I think that really lends to the aging of it. Because that water runs down and then it just rusts across here. Okay? Let's just define this area a little more so it looks like it's that front edge. All right, now that's basically all I'm going to do to that. Um, I say that, I'm gonna come in here and put a little there. When I put a color in one area, I like to go ahead and drag that color around to other areas just to make it look like it all belongs together. Okay, um, let's start working across this front. This, again, is that, um, I'm gonna do it in that black raspberry color. It's got a little bit of red to it, is the reason I'm using this color. Okay, so my darkest areas, I'm just gonna go ahead and put these boards in, and this time it is boards. Okay, and a lot of it gets lost just because it is so dark, but um, in the picture, and you get the color copy also when you purchase, it's a little more defined, so that's going to help you to really see these boards a little easier. Okay, but you can already see how that's starting to come together there. And you would do the same thing through all of these boards. All right. Now, I have lines in my paper here. That's because my printer was running out of ink. So don't pay any attention to those. I just figure I could go ahead and print it off that way anyway because I was going to color over it. That's one thing about grayscale. You don't have to have all the perfect ink in your printer to be able to do this. Just enough to show you the lights and darks and to show you the outline and such as that. Now I'm going to move over to 947. This is a darker, this is pretty dark. It's um, dark umber because I decided I didn't want to do this totally black, this windowed area. I guess that's really where the um, the doors would open and the hay and stuff is. But I decided I didn't want to go black black on that. So I've picked this color instead. And I would go ahead and go all the way across. Okay. Now see how I'm hitting my finger? Instead of going this way, I place my finger at the bottom. Can you hear it? And that's helping me to keep that straight line. See there? You could also put a ruler down there, but it keeps me from going back and forth the other direction because I would really like to stay going this direction, up and down. Now I'm going to put that down and sh and then as I was saying I'm going to put that down and I don't know why the last video just chopped off but I'm picking up my black my 935 and I'm going to come in here and because a little bit of light is shining in here but not a lot I want to go ahead and deepen up some of this bottom area. Do you see how that just gives a little bit of form and shape? Makes it look like something's going on back there in the shadows. And then I can have it get lighter up in here. I can do again some more dark here. You've seen me do this before where I put the pencil down and do dark at the base and then lighter at the top. I just kind of flick that pencil up. 
So now I've given some form. It's darker here and then a little bit lighter up there. If I do this, maybe that helps you see it just a bit more. It's ever so subtle, but it's there. Okay, so let's come back in and work on this some more. Um, we had done a lot of the darks, but we have more darks to go. So once again, I'm going to pick up 947 and come in here and get some of these darks in. This is where I'm actually setting in the actual planks so that it will look like actual individual pieces of wood. If you cannot tell where pieces of wood are, as long as you're keeping your spacing fairly even, you can just draw them in. Just draw them in. Again, as long as you're keeping them fairly even, it's going to look like planks going across. You don't even have to connect your lines, what I was just doing. You don't have to connect those. I'm going to take this color and I'm going to put this shadow in. There's a shadow in here where that roof is hanging. And then I'm just going to let it fade into that other color. Okay? So your lines don't have to connect top and bottom. You're just doing the illusion of it. Your eye will finish connecting those for you. Okay? Putting that one back down. Let's go down to, as they all start rolling, number 1081. This is my chestnut because I don't want this all totally dark. So now I'm going to fill in with some of this brown. And again, just those long strokes. Now, can you imagine if you took my worksheet, changed up the color, made it a newer, fresher painted barn, and did this in reds? Would that not be cool? You could even change it up and put a green roof on it. Oh, I've seen, out here in Texas, we see all kinds of roofs and stuff on our barns. Okay, this is 1033. Again, adding more color, more layers. The more layers you put on each board, the more depth your picture is going to have. That's why we keep that light touch. Okay, just adding layers as we go. Now, if I were doing this to frame and I was going to ride across the top, I would be going all the way across in this section just like I went all the way in this section. I wanted to do the entire roof because of the different directions of the um, metal sheeting. With the boards, I'm not as worried about it because when you learn to do boards, once you get going, you'll be fine. Okay, now I'm going to pick up this Light Peach 927. This is actually, I believe that... Um, window, not window, what would that be called? A swinging door. Okay. So let's go in and I'm going to take the black again and I'm going to come on down here and square this off a bit. Color that in because that would be darker. But see how that would swing over the front and close here. Okay, so that's that door that's actually propped open. And the light's hitting it different. And that's why it's so much lighter. Okay, this one on this side is already swung open. So you're seeing the back side of it. And that's why it's a little bit different color too. Alright, so that was black. Um, you're going to do the same thing down through here. This is a shadow but it still has a little bit of grain in it. So when you're putting that shadow in, I'm going to put in 947. I'm going to go ahead and change directions just because it's easier for me to get in that long line. Okay, I'm going to get it started in here. 
I'm getting real light right here. The reason for that is that when you start putting these pickets in, I'll just pick this one up. This is 945. When you start putting these in, you want to run them up into the edge of that shadow. That way that shadow looks more natural, like it's actually coming across there. The other thing I would do is come in with that black and deepen in right up here at the top because and then get lighter as you come down because that really is way up under the edge of that. Okay? This is where this piece has lifted over time. This piece, it's actually lifting off. So I can actually come in here with some black and then just kind of mess up this corner and it makes it look even more like that is starting to peel up. Okay? Again, it's an old barn. Now, this down here is another fence piece. So we're going to take this, and this is why I pulled out my, my warm grays. A lot of times I'll use my cool grays, but this time I pulled out the warms. This is number 1050, and so the lightest areas are going to have this lightest gray. And again, it's boards. You don't have to be real specific in this. Just get your lightest colors in. What's happened is part of this fence has fallen down, and so they've resurfaced or re-put a new front up. Now let's just go back one. That's 1051. Let's get that next shade in. Again, keep it. Keep it in your long lines. Let's let it look aged. But yeah, this is a this is a gray fence. And it's just that one part across here. And then there's some over here where they've had to replace the wood. Okay? So that's why I'm using the grays. This is also some grays down in here. And then across this front is gray boards also. And again, when you purchase this, you'll see that in the original when you get it. This is the next one, 1052. I'm on 30% warm gray now. See, we're just going to make this look old. Just get those grays in there. Use your long strokes. They should be already starting to resemble some boards. Now I went up to the 50% with 1054, and this is my darker one, so I'm going to use it sparingly. But we do need some darks in there. Again, those long, long lines. Keep them broken lines. Don't go all the way from top to bottom necessarily. You can keep them kind of broken. And there we've got the good beginnings to a fence. The only thing is we still need to age that fence some because if the barn is that old, this fence has got to have some age on it too. So I'm going to go back in now with my black raspberry and do the darkest areas where we've got some wear. Water still drips down. Sometimes it catches a nail. Sometimes it just gets stuck in there somewhere and it will show some age. Now I'm going to come in with my 1033. There we go. Mineral orange. I think it's mineral orange. And I'm going to go even a little more around these. Now I'm using just a light touch now, but I really want this to look old, beat up, and kind of rusted. Even though it's newer wood, I want to throw some age onto it. Okay, so just around those other areas, I'm just barely going over this. And I just want to add some age. Do you, can you tell how old that looks? It's just really an old fence. All right. 
Um, let's see, what else do you need to know on this? I think that's really about it. I think you can finish this up from that. When you're doing your grasses, um, make sure that you get your lights in, and that's almost white. There's some browns over in here. There's different shades of greens, and um, you really want to age it. When you're doing your boards over here, be sure that you're going the different directions to make those boards look like they are really stacked and overlapping. Okay, that was 1033. Let me grab, let's see, what's this? This is 939. This is one of those lighter boards. And you notice we've not done just a whole lot of blending with this. I'm going to grab my white and come in here and go ahead and do some blending with this because this board's quite a bit lighter. This area is light. This one's a little lighter. And see, I can just change the look of those boards. If you want to come in here and add some white, you can, you can still do that. Just go back in and add some areas where you think the light might be hitting it. And it'll just help age everything some more. We can do the same thing up in here. You know, it is metal, so it is going to have a certain amount of shine to it still, even though it is aged. And up here, if we do that, we've got to stay at that angle, remember? Okay, so go ahead and um, finish yours off. If you do get this page, I would love for you, if you're a member over at Coloring Books Keep It Clean on Facebook, I would love for you to post it over there and um, just let us see your finished one. I love it when people just change up the colors and you make it your own. Go for it. Love to hear from you and I will talk to you later. Oh, the um, link for this page will be down underneath in the comments. So, all right. Bye.